How much does your acceptance of fate factor into your writing career? For me, I am a firm believer that I have always ended up where I was supposed to. And, you know, I'm sure there are people who are like, well, you know, you just want to believe that because it's it makes it easier when stuff doesn't go your way. Yes, it does. It does make it easier. But I also think it's true. So a perfect example of this is after I finished Writers on the Verge, I, I probably did somewhere around 30 meetings that year, which is a lot. My agent and my manager had me on general after general after general, and I had four showrunner meetings. And for those jobs, literally every single one was, it's between you and one other person. And one other person got all the jobs. And two of those people were my friends. So I could have chosen to be sad about it, or I could be happy for my friends. And I could be sad for myself for a day. I gave myself a day to cry it out. <laughs> and then I had to be like, what, what's next? What do I do next? And so what I did next was write the pilot that got me my first job. And I, had, I didn't know that at the time. I was just like, okay, I'm gonna go write this thing that I wanna write. And I entered a pilot in the Austin Film Festival and made it to the semifinals and got to go to Austin for the first time. And it was just like, what can I do that's positive for my career? What happened later was that most of those jobs I heard stories about them that made me very grateful that they were not my jobs. And then I got hired at Ironside where you will hear lots of stories about writers who go into their first room and especially if they're a diversity hire, right, as I was. And it's a lot of like, oh, the diversity writer and bad attitudes and that kind of stuff. I went into a room where my showrunner had literally basically had the attitude of, I hired these two staff writers because I like them and I think they're talented. All of you support them. And they did. And so every writer in that room helped me in some way, taught me something. And I still am in contact with almost all of them. And you know they all helped build me to the next level of my career. Now that is not the way it is in a lot of rooms. It's the way it should always be. But I ended up there because I needed those people. And then my next job I went to was this show called Allegiance. And it turned out that somebody I had met tangentially through one of the writing programs was going to be one of the people in charge of that show. And it, he came on after I had already had my meeting. So pure luck and happenstance that we ended up there together. He knew that I was the kind of person who worked hard. So he told the other two executive producers that basically like, Nicole's always gonna be here, we got her. And three weeks into the job, my showrunner joked with them and said, you know we're all gonna work for Nicole later, right? <laughs> Cause I, that's how I had been brought up, was to always be there and be ready to do whatever needs to be done. And because I kept that work ethic, even when our show got difficult, even when we had struggles getting scripts out, I always kept that attitude and George Nolfi, who was our showrunner, ended up asking me to co-write a movie with him because of that work ethic, because he knew that he could count on me to do what needed to be done. And I wasn't going to like, I don't know how to handle all this. He was like, nope, you, you can do this. And so that's how I ended up co-writing The Banker, which is my first feature film. So... You know, that that all feels meant to be to me. And so, and I feel like every job I've ended up at, I ended up at a job, I interviewed for my dream show while I had an offer for another job. And the dream show was like, we love her, but we think we're gonna hire someone else. So I took the other job. I met one of my best friends in life at that job. So if I had gone to my dream job, would I ever have met this person? Probably not, but she's so important to my life. I'm just glad that I did. So that's how I look at it. I think every place you end up is of value to you. I think even hard jobs teach you how not to do the job, right? Bad rooms teach you how to never treat people, how to not let the process go off the rails. They teach you how to be humane in the face of adversity because it's what you wish someone had done for you. 
So you hopefully take that, you know, and carry it on with you. So I just think, you know, embrace every experience as I'm supposed to learn something here. And you will. And then it's going to make you a better writer and later a better showrunner. What's that day like or the morning like when you've had your, I, I've heard you say before, you, you're allowed to grieve a project that's lost or whatever, but you only give yourself the short window of time. Yeah. So what's the next morning like when it's like, okay, Nicole's not allowed to feel bad anymore. We're going to get up. And how do you, how do you give yourself that pep talk? What's that like? It's, um, you know, it's very much a thing of, it really is. It's like you get up, I have walk my dog, I have breakfast, I have some coffee, and I'm like, okay, what's the one thing you can do that is a forward step? It doesn't have to be a lot. I don't have to start a new script today. I don't have to know what I'm going to pitch next if a development project went away. It's just like, what can you do today? And sometimes it's just reaching out to a writer friend and being like, hey, can I talk to you about this? Because it was rough and I just want to talk it through with someone. And you do. And then you're like, okay. And then the next day you're like, okay, talking to my reps, what is, what is the project we should focus on next? Or I'm like, hey, I got three books I'm going to read and see if any of them would make a good pilot or whatever it is. But if you wallow in it, because this business is so much rejection that it's just going to debilitate you. And so you, everyone has to find their way of being able to be like, oh, that sucked. And then let it go. <laughs> because, and, and if you need more than a day, take more than a day. But like, I can't spend more than, more than 48 hours in that place because then it's harder for me to get out. So I, I just say to myself like, okay, this is your weekend to be sad. And then we have to move on because it's all, it's always like, okay, what's next? What's next? What do I do next? Because you're going to work jobs you love and the show's going to get canceled. You're going to write a pilot script that everyone says is amazing and the network's going to not pick it up. You, so it's just, it's a lot of no and you have to be able to say, okay, I'm going to do this next.